the things that I love the most is when people try the food that I prepared and, and they feel happy. Like I can help them to feel different just with with food. And that That's amazing. <laughs> We love checking in with young up and coming chefs on Dirty Linen. And today's interviewee is certainly that. I met Lady Maldonado while, when she was competing in the San Pellegrino Young Chef Awards in Sydney a few weeks ago. She's from Colombia. She cooks in North Queensland. And I'm thrilled to welcome her to Dirty Linen. Welcome, Lady. Hi, Danny. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here and talk to you again. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm thrilled to have you on the show. I have to say you made a real impression on me when I met you in Sydney. Uh, from the from the moment I met you at the Welcome Drinks on the Sunday night, you'd arrived um, from North Queensland with your TAFE teacher as your mentor and you cooked a really your spin on a traditional Colombian dish. I mean, tell us about the experience from your point of view oh it was really really amazing experience because I have been in other competitions and this was really nice organized everything was perfectly set up like it was really prepared and they was thinking with uh, they was thinking and um, to make this everything much easier um less stressful for the competitors and we really appreciate because when we are in a competition it's really stressful and when we don't have the staff or when we don't have the utensils or when we don't have when we are missing things for the preparation our our dish it's like we get more stress um more stressful but with this competition it doesn't happen like I was so relaxed like of course I was stressed because of the competition but I was feeling like comfortable because I have everything that I needed to do as I planning to do it. And tell us about your dish you, you put so much thought and heart into it what, what, what tell us about the dish and why it meant so much to you. Um, I prepared a clown salad in Spanish is ensalada de payaso um, what I want to show this is a popular salad um we used to have this salad when we have lunch no in fine dining restaurants usually when we are in a in a takeaway or when we are in in a small restaurants but i want to show different skills and also how we can incorporate different ingredients and make something that is quite simple because it was just a chicken salad uh, even it's something simple like with too much love and with too much uh, seasoning um, and flavors and enhance the flavor of the dish and I love the name clown salad can you tell us why it's called clown salad <laughs> yes it's a funny story because is it have two meanings like this salad is is from the north of the Colombia, from the north coast of Colombia. And this salad, the name is because we have many funny ingredients, like colorful. It has carrots, it has currants, it has also beetroot. Um, I, when I plate the salad, I separate the ingredients, but we usually we mix all the ingredients together and it have mayonnaise and when we mix all the ingredients they get uh, the, the beetroot and the carrot colors everywhere and that's one of what is the name and also it is because when we are child we start learning to eat with the hands and when we are eating we finish with a funny face like clown and that's also why is the name <laughs> <laughs> I love that um and you won an award the food for thought award right yeah which I think really is the food for thought award is really about the narrative of your dish or how you express yourself and, and the things that are important to you through your dish. Um, I, and, yeah, I feel like you, you did that so successfully. So I was really thrilled to see you win that award. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so, Lady, tell us 
uh, how does a person from Colombia end up cooking at a restaurant in Cairns? You're, you're at Nunu Restaurant. Tell us about your journey. Oh, uh, I, I came to Australia just before COVID in 2019 on September. And I started studying English. And when I finished studying English, we have lockdown in my home country and also here. And I wasn't prepared enough. Like when, when I came here, I thought that, oh, in six months, month, I will be ready. I will, I will be so fluent and I will speak perfectly English. And when I finished my six month study, I realized that I was so, so bad. Like I, I even could communicate and express myself and I decided that I should keep going studying English. And I extend my studies. Um, when I was about to finish on 2020, I heard about a scholarship in TAFE, the Destination Australia Scholarship, and I applied for them. And I got it. I got the scholarship. I was living in Brisbane and I got this scholarship to study in, in one regional area. And I decided to come up to Cairns. And I started this amazing journey. It, it was so, like, my experience has been, like, so unrealistic. Like, I even can't believe that all those things has happened to me, to me because it's... It's like unreal. Like I feel that I am still dreaming, <laughs> but I feel so glad because with this experience, I have the opportunity to challenge myself and and keep learning like new skills, new abilities, not just for to work uh, in the industry, also to be a better person, like to be more sensible and sensitive with the people who is doing the job, um, understand what is the process that we have to have to get a meal. When we receive the meal, we say, we don't see how much effort people and how many people have to work to, 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 to have that meal in the table. But when you are working in the industry, you realize how much you have to do, not just the person who is in the kitchen also before that the farmers the time that they have to spend uh, growing the vegetables or looking after the animals but when you are in the kitchen you realize all that big process um, and you will start being more careful and thinking more about how do you want to eat and why do you want to eat and if you really need it so interesting. So, lady, when you came to Australia, you weren't working in hospitality, were you? Yes, I start uh, like when I came, I I start doing many things because my English was no no good enough, and I just could do like basic job jobs. And once I worked for a Latin family. Uh, she was so lovely. She's from Salvador, and. And I was helping her with his son and also the staff in the family, cooking, um, helping with, with her son because he had autism. And yes, it was really, really nice. And she was so lovely, so kind. And I learned too much working with her and with his family. And in Colombia, what had you studied? What, what's your other qualification? Oh, in Colombia, I finished my bachelor as psychologist in 2016. And then I started working in a small, in a small hospital. But when I was working, I, I was feeling that what I was doing, it wasn't enough. Like, yes, I was listening to people, like try help, try help them solving their problems or realize what they have to do to solve their problems and the mirrors that they the issues that they have but I wasn't feeling that I was doing enough and in 2017 I decided to study a master degree and I study a master degree in clinical psychology and I start working and improving and, and working through with about mental health and helping people to 
no fits the problem because it's not my job, but helping them to, to solve it. Um, listening, just when we listen, we are helping. Like we don't have to be psychologists or have a master or bachelor's to, to, to real be connected with people and listen to them and helping them to, to, to find the solution. Because when we talk, and our brain is working and um, he is trying to find a solution and trying to figure it out how we solve that matter that is that that we sometimes we can't see the solution even though it's just in front of our eyes and when we are able to listen and listen carefully and real have a connection with the people and they feel relief and they feel that even though we are not doing, like finding the solution or solving their problems, they, they have realized that they have someone who care and they have someone who can help them to, to feel better. So, yeah, you had this, this qualification and this amazing understanding of, yeah, connecting and helping people and you came to Australia to study English, got a bit stuck here, got this, um, moved to North Queensland, started studying hospitality. Am I, is that the right, is that right? <laughs> so how are you bringing these two worlds of yours together? Oh, they, they are so related because when we are in the kitchen, it's a really, not just in the kitchen, like in a hospitality industry, we have a lot of pressure. Um, uh, many people is tired like they are not just tired because their job that they are doing they are tired because the trade that they receive um, and i think that that's when i start like playing a function oh, oh that is when i start uh, like mashing my my do my do those two professions because when people is stressful, they usually go and talk to me. Um, sometimes they just they just want to talk, um, and I listen to them and and I try to to point in them or help in them to see another point of view because when we are like with a problem or when we are so stressed or so stressful, we, we cannot see the other point of, of view um, and we get more stressful about that situation. And, and I think that has been a role that I have been playing with in my, in my work. Like when people is tired and they start like, complaining or they start expressing their feeling one I listen to them and another thing that I have been doing is try to to help them to see why they are doing this like be focused in the love that they have for and the passion that they have when they are cooking and also that if they are so stressful they can also have time for themselves because many of them, they have been working for so many hours. And of course you get tired. Um, it's also helping them to see that it's not just about the job, it's that we need to have a balance between our working and with our family. And we, we need time for ourselves. And that's so amazing. But it sounds like quite a role that you've, carved out for yourself I mean do you do you see a lot of need in hospitality for this kind of reflection yes I do I think it, we need I think if people is so stressed and um, they don't have like the time or they don't have the persons who they can talk to and they get more frustrated because they cannot see a solution. And at the end, I have seen that so many co-workers, they just give up. And I feel that it's sad because they are so good chefs and they are passionate about that. But at the end, they are just so tired that they decide to do something else that they think that will be better. But it's also un understand understandable because they are tired and they don't know how to manage that situation. And I think that is as 
if as a hospitality industry we start to looking after that small things but they are huge like they seems like small but they make a huge impact in the in the life we can keep people happy and we can keep also have less rotation because what i have seen is that in many restaurants they have all the time they are needing they are hiring and they are needing new staff and this every time that we have new staff it we need to train in them um we spend money training. Um, we can spend that money uh, doing another things like helping the staff that we already have to feel happy, I feel comfortable, and we can have less rotation. I, I, I don't know if I am clear with that. Sorry. So, lady, um, what do you do yourself to ensure that you don't get stressed, burn out, you know, decide to switch jobs? How do you apply your your theories to your own career in hospitality? Oh. One thing that I I try to do is don't work that much. I try to keep balance because I am still studying. And I study in three days. I'm going to work two days. Um, and the days that I'm working, I work between 10 and 12 hours. Um, I could work like four days, but if I work four days, I'm not going to have time off. And for me, that is vital to keep that balance between my working, my working life and my, my free time or my working life balance and and what i usually do when i'm on my days off i i go around i like joking i like swimming i also i'm a volunteer in a red cross i'm a red cross volunteer and when we do another things um i believe that when we help another people that's going back to us um and it's like we are no giving them time. We are giving time for us to help and feel realized. Yeah, amazing. Um, do, what about things like going in cooking competitions? Do you feel like that's a sort of energizing aspect to what you do? Yes. I, I just started this year going to join cooking competitions and the first competition was held at the school here at Tafe Cairns. And this competition was so special, the first one, because the teachers, they organized this competition for international students because as an international student, we don't have too much opportunities to join competition because most of them, they have restrictions about the age, about the nationality, and because most of them, they are just for locals and um, yes we are like uh, excluded of that and this competition was so special because the chef my, my teachers they organized those competitions and they like it's not their job they do because they they want to do something for us and bring us the opportunity to to be in those competitions and um, and for me it really works because uh, it was the first one I prepared a, a dish and I win. It was the first competition that I win a gold medal. And then I, I, I joined another competition, which was with Tabasco. And I also win the first prize here in the regional. And I have the opportunity to go to Melbourne. And like all those small and um things that they seems that maybe they are not gonna have like huge impact i have seen that like in my case i have seen that it works like just that small thing that the teachers wanna do for us it makes a huge impact on my career because after the competition in tabasco i joined the competition with san pellegrino and i have the opportunity to be one of the semi-finalists and then i have the opportunity to be in sydney um join this competition and we around with amazing chef like i think that's the most important thing for me because i have the experience to be with people like you 
like so kind, so lovely. Um, it's just amazing. It's like that that gift to my life, like one more reason to keep going and keep learning and keep in love what I am doing. So, so great, lady. Like you're a bit of a legend to enter these competitions and keep winning things um, because you've only been cooking for a couple of years, right? As a professional, like, yes, because I just started studying <laughs> last year. <laughs> and, and, but I, I learned to cook since I was a child because I really like cooking. I, I enjoy it. I'm doing this because for me it's fun. I love, like, cooking. I love make new things. And when I have the, the pleasure to, to taste something that, like, People think that cook is just put ingredients, but the magic thing is that when they are they are going with each other, oh my gosh, it's like oh they are so like they make a explosion in my mind, and I I really really love that, and I love the the things that I love the most is when people try the food that I prepared and and they feel happy like I I, I don't know how to say but I. I really make me feel uh, happy, like full, like completely, because I, I feel that I can do something for the people. I they can they can enjoy and they can I can help them to feel different just with with food. And that that's amazing. <laughs> It's so it's so interesting to hear you talk about that and then reflecting on how you spoke about you know, treating people when as a psychologist and you were, to me, it sounds like you love, you, you can really see the value in working as a psychologist, but it's not very direct. And it's sort of like you open people up to find the tools to help themselves. Whereas when you talk about cooking, it's like, it's really active. Like it's really something that you're doing and you get this instant response. Oh yes. <laughs> that's, that is a huge difference between being a cookie, between being a chef and being a psychologist. Because for me as a, as a psychologist to, to see the the like the result or to see that people is getting through or they are solving the problem it takes a couple of sessions but as a chef I, I just spent few hours in the kitchen and people take like few minutes eating uh, and I can see the result straight away it's like it's, it's the huge difference between both but they have different satisfaction. They provide different satisfaction for me. Like one is a short time and the other one is a long one, but both are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so what what are you going to do, lady? Like tell us, like, do you have a vision of how your life's going to progress, what you're going to do in the future? Yes. I I dream, or I, I not dream, I want, I would like to have my, my own restaurant and... I would like to have a restaurant where people can feel that they are valued, that that they are special, that they can be their self and they can also provide their knowledge because even though we are working for an, a company, a business or an organization, as an individual, we, we have our own ideas and I would like to appreciate that and I would like to enhance the people life and I also would like that people could have really working life balance because even though we spend most of our time as a adult with our co-workers it should be a fun thing it should be something that we enjoy we should be happy to go to work um, we we should feel like blessful because we are we have a place where we can go we can work we can be happy there, and that's one thing that I really dream about. That when I have my own restaurant, I would like to people wanna work there, wanna be part of the company, and they wanna they wanna go like not just because they have to because they need to eat because. They, they they enjoy and be there because they 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 feel that they it's no it's not gonna be my restaurant or my dream. It's it's gonna be 
the dream of, of all of us. Wow. I think uh, I want to come and get a job with you. <laughs> Where do you think this restaurant will be? Do, I mean, are you, are you, do you feel settled in North Queensland? Do you want to go back to Colombia? Where do you think you'll, you'll end up? Oh, I'm not quite sure now because uh, next year uh, my partner and me, we are planning to move to Adelaide um, and we'll see how it's going the, the our life there because I haven't been in Adelaide but I think it's going to be an amazing experience because I'm going to have the opportunity to learn about new ingredients, new vegetables, new fruits. Um, yes, may, maybe they are, maybe I come back to Cairns because I love this place. It's so beautiful, so green, so shiny. But I, I'm not sure where, but I, I, I think it's going to be here in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, lucky Australia. And um, if we go to Cairns, should we come see you at Nunu Restaurant in the meantime? Oh, yes. Tell us about the restaurant you're working at at the moment. Oh, I work at Nunu. Nunu is a restaurant that uh, the owner is Chef Nico. He is from, from Melbourne. Uh, it's amazing. He's a character because he, he what he's doing, he do because he loves cooking. He loves like, his job. It's, it's not just about the money. It's because... He's brilliant. Like he has uh, a concept, and he ha he knows how to run out out the concept, and he knows how to uh, meet ingredients and enhance enhance the flavor of each ingredients. But he also have the 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 things that they he can make blow out your mind with with the ingredients and how they taste when they put all each other um, another amazing thing about this restaurant is because we we always use uh, uh, fresh products from the market chef nico go every friday he, he, he go every Friday. It's like a ritual for him. And, and he go to the market. He tastes new flavors, new ingredients. Um, and we, every Friday, we have something new in the kitchen. And I think that's amazing. Uh, it's, it's something that I really enjoy because it's, it's like we have a real connection, not just with our customers, we have a connection with, with, with the producers. Like we know where the products come from. And, and Chef Nico, he makes sure that uh, he, he knows the people who they he buy the ingredients and he asks where they're from, how they can use it. And, and we always have something new and something that we can, something new that which we can play and we can create. Uh, and that's so exciting. So what's, if I could only come and have one dish, what would you feed me? Oh, oh my gosh. It's, it's hard. Oh, you have to try uh, as an entry, the bitter leaf. They are so good. It's, it's, it has a popo, green mango, a smoked fish, a meal paste and lemon. The first time that I taste, oh, it. It was unique because I have never tried something before like this. Uh, and also it has finger limes. Um, um, uh, Caffier lime leaf. I, like, I have, in Colombia, I don't know if we have Caffier lime leaf, but when I try here, oh my gosh. Uh, I, I don't know how to express that. It, it's so good. You have to try it. That sounds like a flavor explosion. I will definitely, yeah, definitely have a few of those. That sounds so good. Um, lady, I just, I can't tell you how much I love chatting to you. Is there anything else that you would like to say? Oh, I would like to thank you, Dani, because you were so lovely and I feel so welcome in, 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 in Sydney. Um, I also would like to thank to all people on San Pellegrino because they were so professional, so kind, so nice. And one thing that I wanna like, uh, like I would like to talk is about how women are 
we are getting in the industry and how well we are doing our job. And and that's something that I want to I, I make me, me so, so happy. Like, I, I, so, I, I just feel that we can do so many things and we can do much if we are together. And that's what I saw when in this competition that many women, they were doing an amazing job with so much passion, with so much love and so exceptional that I think it is, is like people cannot say that we are not good as, as uh, what we are doing because it's not good about that. I was so not surprised. I was so happy to see that because it's what what usually happens when when we work like we work with love with love we work with passion and we we work trying to maintain each detail like we keep an eye on the details and that's what i saw in this competition like everything was so just perfect and i i wanna thanks and i wanna enhance that because it was so so amazing for me and made me feel so happy (laughs) <laughs> well, I reckon you brought so much um, great energy, skill, passion, vision to that competition. Um, yeah, everyone brought their own special qualities, but um, yours certainly shone through. Lady, thank you very much for sharing your story with us today on Dirty Linen. I cannot wait to watch what happens as, as you progress in your career and, and your life. Thank you very much for bringing the vibes. Oh, thank you so much, Danny, for your time and for being so nice so lovely and so kind with me i really appreciate and i feel so lucky to meet you (laughs) i feel lucky too this is dirty linen and i'm danny valent we air the issues that the hospitality industry finds hard to talk about hearing from different people with unique perspectives we want to hear from you as well if you have something that needs to be said about a topic get in touch so we can include your perspective. Contact us at dirtylinen at deepintheweeds.com.au or hit us up on Insta at Dirty Linen Podcast. We can't wait to hear from you.